Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, college coaches. This is Coach Anthony Williams, founder and CEO of Connected Athletics. For those of you that may not know, we are a new startup company based here in Austin, Texas. We are focused on bringing a technology platform to help current high school student athletes, collegiate student athletes, and even pro athletes use our platform to tell their story. We know they're great athletes, but who are they off the field? Who are they away from their sport? And so this platform gives them a chance to share, to interact with their fans, to interact with college coaches during the recruiting process, and down the road, interact with potential HR directors and why they should hire them once their eligibility is over. Before we get into our special guest tonight, let me thank my sponsors. First sponsor is a big one, Buffalo Wild Wings. Good friend of mine, uh, regional VP Brian Soltis is also a strong advocate for student athletes. And they, you know, they've come on as a sponsor to help student athletes tell their story. So I want to thank Buffalo Wild Wings for being a sponsor. I also want to thank my friends up at Go Edit Graphics. Uh, they're based out of Nebraska. They do a great job of, of creating these uh, customizable graphics that any high school or collegiate uh, program, athletic program can use to add some graphics to their outbound communication, whether it's a schedule change, player spotlight, or just any information that is outbound to their fan base, they can add um, uh, mascot based colors and with their mascot uh, as part of the graphics. So shout out to Zach and the team of Agoida Graphics. My last sponsor is a company called Epic 247. They're a new sports apparel company. They do uniforms, they do seven on seven jerseys, they do workout gear. They're based out of Houston, Texas. Good friend of mine, Stefan Johnson is the, is the CEO. So if you're looking for something a little bit different from the typical brands you see in these, uh, these brick and mortar stores, you might wanna go check out uh, I am Epic 247. If you're wondering what Epic stands for, Epic stands for every play I compete. So shout out to Stefan and his team down in Houston. So that's all my sponsors. I want to now introduce uh, everybody to a quarterback that I had the chance to look at about a month ago. Uh, Dylan Plake is a quarterback for Harker Heights High School. Uh, he's class 24, so he's still young, uh, but a very uh, productive quarterback. Six foot, 190. I love this part. He's a 3.8 GPA. He's an Under Armour All-American. And coaches, you can see his Twitter name there, D Plake QB9. Dylan, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing great, man. I'm looking forward to hearing your story. Like I said, I got a chance to watch you. You were very impressive that night against Colleen Ellison. But I want to know about the man behind being the quarterback. So let's uh, let's jump right in here and learn more about you. Dylan, you know, and I'm sure your parents stress, the number one thing about recruiting is academics. Uh, one day yes, football is going to come to an end. Uh, tell these coaches now, how. Uh, tell them about the importance you put on your academics. You know, I see academics as the most important thing. You know, if you don't have the grades, you can't play. So I put all my efforts into football and uh, school, but most importantly, school, you know, um, you know, tutoring, you know, um, you know, all I can do to stay successful in the classroom. Gotcha. I like it. Tell us, uh, Dylan, 3.8 GPA. I'm sure there's a lot of teammates and other high school athletes that would love to have that GPA. What are some of your favorite courses that, that drives that, that high GPA? Um, my favorite courses right now is my law class, my chemistry class, and my algebra two class. Nice. Okay. You know, it's, uh, as, as athletes, as a former athlete myself, uh, there's always a certain teacher, coach, counselor, maybe an AP that made a difference in our lives academically. And whether it was in elementary or middle school, shout out, who was that one teacher that made learning fun uh, and how it's changed your, your perspective on academics? Um, hmm. Probably my sixth grade science teacher, Mr. G. He definitely changed uh, school for me a lot. Okay. Tell us, Dylan, um, what kind of learning style would you let these coaches know? What kind do you have? Are you more of a visual, verbal, or hands-on learning style? I'm more of a visual and hands-on. Um, I like being able to touch things and see how it works. So. Okay. Yeah. And then with all that going on, you're, you're still, you know, you know, two years away, roughly two, two plus years away from college. Do you have an idea what you might want to major in when you do get to college? Yes. Uh, criminal justice. Nice. Law enforcement. Yes, sir. Okay. Now just, I mean, and not just because I have a lot of friends, law enforcement, a local police officer, sheriff, FBI agent, Homeland Security. I mean, what do you, what do you think in there long term? Um, FBI agent, you know, nice. Big, big steps up there. Yes, okay. sir. I like it. Okay. Um, tell me this, you know, um, obviously coaches weren't allowed to get into visit uh, players in, in their schools last year because of the pandemic, but they will this year. For those coaches that haven't seen you in class yet, give them a preview. Where are you sitting? How do you interact with your classmates? And more importantly, how do you interact with your teachers? 
I'm always in the front seat. Um, I make it a point to always be in the front in all my classes. Um, I have extra notebooks because I'm an avid, so we have to take notes for everything. So I'm always taking notes, taking down extra notes, and just straight focused on what I have to do. Okay. Dylan, are you taking any uh, AP courses? Yes, sir. I'm in all AP courses. Wow. Okay. Impressive. Uh, as I mentioned before, the 3.8 GPA, I'm sure there's a lot of players on your team that maybe don't have that high GPA. You as a quarterback, it's an automatic leadership position. Uh, do, how do you give back to some of your teammates that are, don't have a 3.8? What do you do to help them out and keep their grades up? Well, I try to help them as much as I can. Sometimes if they need help, um, I'll help them during lunch, like in my car. If they need help with uh, algebra, I'll help them chemistry i'll help them just try to help my teammates so we can be successful as a team okay with 3.8 gpa and, and all ab courses i'm sure you don't struggle much in class but there will be a difference in a gap from high school education to college tell these coaches when you do come across that class that you struggle in a little bit what are some of your best practices to help you overcome a tough class um probably just pushing through it and just focusing on what I need to do, going to tutoring, like I said, and just, mm -hmm. you know, practicing, yeah. working on what I'm, what I have troubles with and finding the, the solutions and moving forward. Yeah. So it sounds like you're not afraid to ask for help if you need it. Yes, sir. Cause you know how we are, our mentality, our dog mentality is football players. Like, no, nah, I'll figure it out. And I'm just telling you in college and there's going to be a course like, you know what? I need some help. I'm struggling right now. So I'm glad to hear, especially that quarterback leadership position that you're like, I'm not afraid to ask for help. So that's great to hear. Um, tell us a little bit. So let's fast forward. Uh, let's say you have a great high school career, college career. Maybe you play in the pros for, you for a few years. What do you want to do when, when you're done with the game of football? Career wise. Well, when I'm, when I'm done with football, you know, I want to give back to my community, help out my parents, you know, do as much as I can just be a good person in life. Um, but most importantly, I want to um, go back into law enforcement and start using my degree and moving forward in that aspect of life. I like it. That's a great goal. Appreciate that. All right, let's learn. Uh, let's move into learning more about you personally. Tell us about your family. Your dad was helping you out getting the, the Zoom here going. Tell us about your mom and dad. What is their occupation? Are they former athletes? And do you have any siblings? Yes, sir. I have uh, two siblings, a uh, younger brother, younger sister. Um, I have my grandma lives with me, too. Uh, my mom and dad were both uh, athletes. My dad was a wrestler. He played baseball and football. Okay. Uh, my mom, she dove in high school. And yeah, that's about it. I know my, my siblings, my brother, he plays baseball. My sister is a big softball player, too. OK, good stuff. Are you the oldest in the middle or are you the baby of the family? I'm the oldest. Tell, tell these coaches the importance that you put on being a good big brother to your younger siblings. Yes, sir. Well, I'm, I'm a role model to them. So they look up to me. You know, I got to do right because they're always watching. So if I can make it and succeed, they know they can too. So. Dallas, you know, Dylan, be real. There's, you know, we always talk about grinding as football players and whatnot. And there's certain days where you just, I don't feel like practicing today. I don't feel like working out today. I don't feel like running today. I don't feel like throwing today. Does your family motivate you? Tell us about the important role of the family in your life as a motivation. Yes, sir. They motivate me a lot. Um, I, pl I play to succeed and I play for them because I want to I want to give back to them. I want to help. I want to. Repay them, basically, because mm -hmm. they've done so much for me, sacrificed so much for me. And one day when I make it, I'm going to repay them back. Nice. Dylan, tell these coaches here when you're when you're done with homework and you're you're done with practice and there's no game. What are some of your hobbies? What do you like to do away from your sport? I like to play Xbox. It's a good way to um, just escape and just be free for a little bit. My favorite games are like Madden, Call of Duty, and all that. So, you know, I'm not always away from football, but you know, my heart's still there when it comes to Madden and stuff. Okay. But, yeah. So it begs the question, are you giving L's? Or you taking L's in Madden? Oh, I'm giving L's. <laughs> that's, a, that's the typical answer. I like it. Besides gaming, what else do you like to do? You like to fish? You the country boy, you like to get out and hunt? Like what else do you do in your spare time? Oh yeah, I like fishing and hunting, yes, sir. Okay. All right. What do you hunt? Deer, buck. Okay. Good stuff. Yes, sir. Is that kind of a release? Because, you know, football, you're starting to hear more about mental health in, in our sport and in, in all sports now, especially at the Olympics. Uh, is that something that kind of helps you kind of deal with the stress 
of being a top quarterback in high school? Yes, sir. Especially because, you know, it's just, again, it's just a way to relieve, you mm -hmm. know, forget everything and just relax for a, for a moment. You know, it's quiet out there and it's just you and nature. So you get your mind off of it and just, you know, experience life for okay. what it is. Good stuff. I like it. You know, uh, you know how important social media is now. You're only a sophomore and, and there'll be a lot of coaches getting on you here come up in this offseason, I'm sure. Uh, for those coaches that have not visited your timeline, uh, tell them what do you, what kind of content, what kind of message are you putting out there about yourself? What kind of brand are you putting out there about Dylan? Um, well, you know, I'm trying to put off a good message and a good view. So I'm trying to basically put a good image out on social media and show them what I'm about, you know, on, on the field and off the field through the words that I put out um, through social media. Okay. Good stuff. And then are you careful what you post and retweet also? Because although you may not have posted it, coach look at it as if he retweeted it, he probably believes it. Um, wh where are you on, on that as far as, uh, you know, make sure you put out, you know, positive messaging to these coaches. Yes, sir. I've heard that rule big time and I, I live by it. You know, okay. I try not to post any or I don't post anything stupid because mm -hmm. I know it can affect me in the long run. Yeah, I'll give you a hint that I tell all student athletes that I come across. A lot of athletes, their timeline is full of them making plays or working out. The one thing coaches tell me is to tell these student athletes like yourself, we want to see you interact with your family. We want to see you at your sister's softball game. It shows us you care about family and our college team is a family. So I know a lot of kids like, hey, I'm out here grinding, I'm lifting. It's all about them. But I'm just telling you a secret. Coaches love seeing what you do when you're done with your workout. Are you supporting your mom and dad with your family, your grandmother, things like that? So keep that in mind as you move forward here. Um, so, let's go into some of my favorite questions here. What are, what's your favorite all-time sports movie? And it doesn't have to be football. Uh, oh, well, it's Remember the Titans. You know, that was a great movie. Yeah, yep. I watched it so many times. Me and my best friend, I don't know why, but that was our favorite movie. And it, it's one of my favorites of all time. Well, I don't know if you're like me. If I'm flipping through the channels and it's on, I don't care what, if it's the end, the middle, the beginning. I got. I've probably seen that movie, I don't know, 500 times. It's just if it's oh, on, yeah. I'm gonna watch it. And I always. It's funny because I always learn something different that I didn't see, learn in the previous. There's so many great messages in that movie, but that, that's a great choice. Uh, tell these coaches what's your favorite food. If you're on your recruiting visit, they better have this, and I'm gonna be all attention. What, what's your favorite food? My favorite food is seafood. You know, my family <laughs> is from New Orleans. So we're all, we know good seafood. Okay. I love that stuff. All right. Yeah. Go, go give us a little more detail. What kind of, there's a lot of great food coming out of Louisiana. What kind of, are we talking about, uh, um, what, gumbo? Or are we oh, talking jambalaya? Gumbo, what are we talking? Crawfish, jambalaya, etouffee, okay. old boys. All I see you. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I don't know if you're a big fan of uh, Marvel or DC Comics, but if you could be a superhero, which one would you be and why? I'd probably say Superman, you know, he's the all-time leader. Um, he's unstoppable. I mean, only one thing can kill him. Uh, and he's just so powerful. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That's fair. I like that. Um, another, qu another question that coaches love to hear about uh, is, who are going to be the people that are going to help you make the decision here in a couple of years when you decide to commit to a certain school? Who's going to be involved in helping you make that decision? My parents. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else outside the family? I guess I'll ask that question. Um, maybe my quarterback coach. Okay, good stuff there. And then, you know, there's not an athlete I've ever met or coached that doesn't love playing in front of a packed house. I've went to one of your home games and you guys have a great sport in your community. But the more important question is, what are you doing to give back to your community there in, in Harper Heights? Well, you know, I, I help our, our little league team that we have here in our area. And uh, sometimes I'll go out there and help the quarterbacks out, you know, give back to the little kids, you know, help them because they're the future of our high school. So, right. you know, I want them to succeed. So that way our high school can succeed, you know, after I'm gone. Right. So just giving back to the younger generation to help them um, succeed, become yeah. greatness. Yeah, I like it. it. Love how you get back there. Uh, tell me, um, you know, I kind of asked this earlier about your career, but what do you want your life to look like once your eligibility is over, whether it's after a pro, pro career or not? When you're done with football or football's done with you, what do you, do you want to be married one day down the road? You talk about, you know, we be in law enforcement, give these coaches the idea that, hey, when I'm done playing, I'm still going to be a great ambassador for your university because of this. Yes, sir. 
well, you know, of course, I do want to get married, but that's for a later time. Yeah. Um, I want to focus on my education, you know, graduate then. And then, you know, as I said, with law enforcement, I want to um, I want to work on that. I want to develop my career there, work up, you know, to the FBI agent that I want to become and um, just serve and protect uh, my nation. And yeah. OK, that's a great answer. I like that. Um, you know, one thing we talked about uh, was, you know, you giving back and, and your goals. But tell me a little bit about, um, you know, there's, there's a trend now. We, we've seen kids be an early entry into college uh, halfway through this senior year. We saw, you know, uh, Quinn Evers, you know, go completely for go this senior year. I know it's still early, but have you thought about if you do commit to the right school, do you want to stay all four years in high school or would you be open to being an early enrollee? I would I would have to stay all four years in high school. Okay. I just I I love the game too much that like I couldn't miss my senior year. You know, that's yeah. extra games that I can play, you know, just all that. You know, I just want to be with my teammates and all of them, too. And it's just it would be weird to leave my senior year, you know. Yeah. So, just, yeah. Yeah. I, I completely respect that. I'm old school and you're only a senior once in your life and you can't rewind time and go back. So I, I love your response absolutely makes sense. And I'm not saying it doesn't for those that decide to leave early. Everybody has their own reasons, but you can't get back that second semester of your, of your senior year. Dylan, do you have a favorite quote or, or Bible verse? And if you do, what is it? Uh, yes, my, I have a Bible verse, um, Joshua 1.9. It says, have no fear for with yeah. God is with you wherever you may go. I yeah. have it on my towel. You know, I have it everywhere. And I just live by it because, you know, God's with me wherever I go. So, yeah. you know, what's there to be afraid of? You know, I step onto the field with full confidence and belief. Yeah. You know, fear, fear no man. Yeah. You know? so, I'm a, yeah, I love that. It's one of my favorite verses also. And I always remind people that isn't just when things are going well and you're throwing five touchdown passes and blowing out teams. When things are going bad, God is still with me. He still got my back. So I love that you have Joshua 1-9 as your favorite verse. That is awesome. Dylan, tell us, what's your favorite sports memory of yourself? Even back to Pop Warner, could have been baseball, first home run. What's your favorite memory? You look back and go, yeah, I remember doing that. It was when... um my my 10U football team, we went to state, we went to the state championship and won. It was the first time we ever won. Um, me and my best friend, we were on the same team. It was it was just amazing because you know, we came from like the eighth seed, beat the number mm -hmm. one seed, like everybody was against us. Um, it was actually on Typha like radio or whatever. Yeah. And uh Kenny Long had us picked eighth and we just came out and just destroyed everybody nice. and totally change the tolls and everything so yeah uh -huh. all right well Dylan, I, I watched you play you're not you're not just a quarterback you're an athlete you know you can move pocket got a good arm but it looks like you play other sports do you play any other sports besides football yes sir i wrestle and play baseball nice what position in baseball shortstop third base i'm a utility player so i can play wherever coaches okay. need and then where do you bat in the lineup oh uh, I'm top three for sure. Okay. All right. I like yeah, it. I'm normally okay. third though. All right. Uh, Dylan, tell these coaches, do you have a nickname uh, that your family or friends call you? And if you do, what is it? No, sir. I do not. Okay. Just going by Dylan QB one. I like it. Um, tell me you're, uh, I don't know. You, are you guys still in the playoffs or you're playing this week? No, sir. We got knocked out by DeSoto. Okay. Okay. Uh, tough team to, to, to lose to obviously. Uh, now that the season's over, Tell these coaches, what are you doing? What have you learned from this past season that's driving some of your goals to get better in the offseason, get ready for next year? Well, I learned a lot. You know, I definitely – I never understood reading defenses until this year, and now mm -hmm. it's just mind-blowing because I'll be watching the NFL and I'm like, oh, they're in cover two. Oh, they're inverted. You know, yeah. oh, they're rolling the safeties down. You know, I just see everything now, and I know what can beat all these uh, coverages, like cover <clears> three, <throat> all of them. I, I know what – beats everything so it's just crazy that i can pick oh do this boom they do it yeah you know, it's just yeah and um it, it definitely helps and makes the game a lot more fun because now it's just easy so i'm just dinking and dunking here and we're mm -hmm. driving up the field and scoring yeah good stuff you know one of the things as a, as a quarterback that i tell a lot of guys that i work with in the national combine the all-american game uh, as you move up at the higher levels the, the windows get smaller. You know, we're high school right now. Windows are pretty big. You got a big arm. You can throw a guy open. You get to college. Those windows get smaller. And the NFL, my son played seven years in the league, a cornerback with Buffalo Bills. The windows get even tighter. 
talk about your progression as a quarterback that, you know, right now I'm throwing the guys, I just, my guy's fast that guy and he's open. But as you move forward, talk about your mindset and, and how you, you mentioned it, reading defenses and then being able to throw in the tight windows. Yes, sir. Well, you know, of course, I'm always looking for my first progression. My first progression isn't there. Checking out <laughs> my second one. You know, I'm always looking for my check downs because, you know, yep. those are your best friends when it comes to it. Um, first option is not there. Second option is not there. Your third option is not there. You got two options, throw it away or run it. But, you know, I'm more of a pocket passer guy, so I like to sit and wait for that second window. If that first one yep. is not there, I'm going to wait and then fire it now. You know, if nothing's there, then I just got to use what God gave me and make a play out of nothing. Yeah. And, you know, that's – I feel like sometimes I can do it. Sometimes I get caught, but, you know, I make it work. Okay. Now, I watched your video many times and I actually seen you live. I mean, you, you're you young, but you've got good pocket presence. A lot, of, a lot of young quarterbacks panic once they feel that the pocket might be breaking down. You've got great footwork. you got great release. You trust your linemen, obviously. Um, that is something that really impressed me about your game. One thing I forgot to ask you <clears throat> that coaches want to hear about, you're six foot 190 now. How tall is your mom and dad, and what height and weight do you think you'll be by the time you graduate? My dad is six foot. I, I don't know how much he weighs. Dad, how much you weigh? He said a lot. Okay. My mom, <laughs> my mom, mom, how tall are you? She's 5'8". How much do you weigh? Don't never she ask a woman face. how much she weighs. Oh, my bad, my bad. You didn't mean that, mom. My bad. So, yeah, she, so your, she's five Your mom's 5'8", eight, eight, your dad's six foot, okay? Yes, sir. All right, so you've got some height in the family. What what height and weight do you think you'll be by the time you graduate? Hopefully, six three, six six three, six four. Hopefully around okay. there. But yeah. all right, What's wrong with that. That's good size. Uh, tell me, um, tell me how important, especially being a leader quarterback, uh, how much trust plays into your role as a leader, as a teammate, and how important is it to trust your coaches, and more importantly, for your coaches to trust you? How important is trust to you? I, I see trust as very, very, very important. Um, because if you, your coaches don't trust you, then nothing's gonna work or in your favor. Like they can't trust you to make these throws, you know, all that stuff. And trust on the for your teammates is big too, because you know, I trust my guys to go up and get it. My guys are gonna beat your guys any day of the week. 50-50 fade ball, my running back up the middle, like my guys will always win. I trust them, I trust my coaches, they trust me. It's just a whole family of trust. Yeah. And I think it's super big to have, especially all levels, little league, the college, even the pros. So, yeah. Dylan, tell me, uh, how would your teammates describe you as a teammate? I think they would describe me as a leader, of course, because I'm always focused in practice. You know, I'm, I'm never the one to go goof off or, you know, do anything stupid that could affect the team. I'm always the first on the field um, in the weight room. I'm one of the last ones to leave too, because after uh, practice, I'll like sit in my car and watch film and all that, and then leave and then come back during lunch and watch film again. So yeah, I'm always one step ahead and just you know doing what I can do to, for one, earn my respect because I was a sophomore last year, and for two, just to gain the trust and um, learn everything I can to be successful. So. Yeah. yeah. No, great response. Dylan, have you always been a quarterback or did you convert from another position? Um, I've always been a quarterback, but I also played linebacker when I was in uh, little league and middle school. So. All right. All right. Tell me this, and this is something that most people don't understand, but you know, the, they say the quarterback position gets too much blame on a loss and too much kudos when, on a win. How do you handle that stress, the ups and downs of being a quarterback? Um, you know, I, I keep everything at like an even kill, you know, I don't let myself get too high. I don't let myself get too low because, um, you know, being a quarterback, you just got to stay, stay calm, just got to like play relaxed basically. And you can't let little things affect your play um, affect how you see things, you know, just, you can, you just got to stay even. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dylan, is there a certain quarterback that you pattern your game off of maybe at the college or pro level? And if you do, who is it? Is Drew Brees. That's my all, right. all okay. time favorite quarterback. That's why we're number nine. I've been okay. watching him forever. Um, like I have posters of him in my room, everything. Like I try to even match his uh his uh geez, uh throwing style. 
Yeah, play style. I, I forgot. Mm-hmm. I just had a huge brain fart. Anyways, but yeah, he's my um, okay. He's my all-time favorite quarterback. All right. And then, do you play uh, seven on seven? Yes, sir. I do. Who are you playing with? Uh, I was with Team Flex last year, but now okay. they're we're with a different team. It's a new team. They uh, they're out of like Central Texas area. It's called uh, Texas Nightmare. They're just okay. starting this year. So okay. yeah. And then do you have a quarterback trainer that somebody you're working with that you want to shout out or no? Uh, yeah, I have two right now. Um, Coach Quincy Carter, and then I also have Coach Jeff Blake. Those are two guys that have been helping me. Two of my good yeah. friends. Quincy Carter, former yeah. uh, Georgia Bulldog and Dallas Cowboy, and Jeff Blake, former Cincinnati Bengal, who's uh, doing a lot of work. Uh, you got two good guys uh, right there, big time. Hey, as we finish yeah. up here, and I, you know, heard, you've heard me mention um, the quarterback is a, is a position of leadership. Talk about your leadership style. Um, <clears throat> define leadership and how you plan on leading your team based on what you learned this year. How do you plan on leading them next year as a junior? You know, I see leadership as uh, doing right, you know, by all means necessary, you know, never putting anybody down, doing um, what you can do to help and succeed um, for the team, um, you know, being a role model and setting the example for the younger guys. And um, so, yeah. And then uh, uh, what was the second question? Uh, just, you know, what you, uh, you know, what kind of, what, how do you plan on leading your team next year? Oh, um, oh, I definitely tend to uh, take more of the leadership this year, especially since now I'm an upperclassman, yep. you know, I have more of the team behind me now. So we're definitely going to do some big things this year and we're going to, I'm going to lead them. Okay. I'm going to lead them pretty good this year. So, yeah. Good stuff. Hey, Lyle, finishing up here, we'll talk about recruiting. You know, people are probably thinking, why are you going to talk about these other questions? This is a, a, a podcast that we want to learn more about you. But now let's talk about recruiting. Well, I call it realistic recruiting. Who do you want to hear? I know you're just now and you're finishing your sophomore year, but you're going to be a big time prospect in your class. Who do you want to hear from? Who have you heard from? Tell us a little bit about, about your recruiting experience so far. Um, I definitely want to hear from big D1 schools, you know. Of course, that's the that's the dream. But, you know, um, sometimes it may not happen. Sometimes it will. But, you know, my all time big dream school is LSU. Um, that's my absolute number one option. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like UT, OU, TCU, all the Texas schools pretty much. Um, you know, I, I want to stay south, though. And uh, yeah, I haven't had any college uh, colleges reach out to me or talk to me yet. So, yeah, that's that's about to change here this spring and summer. Believe me, we'll take care of that. Hey, uh, and then lastly here, and then probably one of the most one of my favorite questions, describe to these coaches your competitive spirit. What kind of competitor are you? Oh, I'm super competitive. You know, I'm I always want to win. You know, I, I I see it as a game or I see it as a challenge. Like you will not beat me. Um, I'm going to go 120 percent every snap, every play. I'm going to make well, I'm going to do whatever I can to get the ball to my playmakers get the ball in the end zone and win the game. You know, I'm just the top dog on the field, basically. Okay. So, yeah. Well, Dylan, we appreciate your time here. You and I talked about it before we got started about the elevator pitch. There may be a coach that maybe caught the end of this uh, interview uh, and may, want, may, may be looking for a reason to go back and watch the other 25 minutes. Look on the camera right now and tell these coaches your elevator pitch. Tell them why they should recruit you and what you're going to bring to their program. Yes, sir. College coaches should recruit me because – you know, I'm I'm the guy. I, I'm the one that they're gonna call up when the play is on the line, when when they need a last second touchdown pass, when they needed to win the game. I'm gonna the guy that's gonna put the ball in the end zone and succeed at all costs. Okay. And then tell tell these, tell these coach a little bit about what you're gonna bring to the school from a student perspective on campus. What kind of ambassador for the institution will you will you be? Yes, sir. I'm gonna always be in the classroom. You know, keep the nose in the books, basically. Uh, keep that keep the grades up you know keep maintain that 3.8 GPA get my degree put a good name on the school you know do great in the world okay love it man you I love your energy uh love the uh, the way that you handle the way you advocate for yourself and like I said I know after seeing this video and people get to see your your sophomore highlight video uh you're gonna get some attention I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to make sure that tell your parents I said thank you for coming on I know you're busy just getting out done with the season trying to get some rest uh, keep those grades up. And if you ever need anything, please feel free to reach out to me and maybe we'll follow up with you uh, later part of next year and see where you're at right now. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, man. Have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Thanks.